Hello and welcome to e VTU eSectional Learning Learning Platform. In this video, we will going to discuss regarding WireLAN that is Ethernet. As we know that the TCP IP protocol suit does not define any protocol for a data link layer or a physical layer. But in other words, you can say that the TCP IP will going to accept any protocol for these two layers which can support the network layer of that particular model. Say in case of TCP IP, the protocols which are capable to support the IP protocol or the network layer protocols of OSI model that will going to be accepted. Actually this basically these two layers are the territories of LAN and WAN. Now to know regarding this wired LAN and Ethernet. So we will first discuss regarding some IEEE standards that we often see in our life, real life. So actually in 1985 the computer society of IEEE has started a project called I uh, started a project this uh, IEEE has started a project called as project 802 started a project called as project 802 to start basically this is to set the standards to enable intercommunication among say equipments of the variety of manufacturers okay so it basically to make a free communication between a different equipments that are manufactured by different vendors now this 802 basically project 802 is not seek a replacement for this osi or a tcp ip model so instead it provides a way to specify the functions for physical layer and a data link layer of major LAN protocols. Now the relationship between this 802 standard to that of TCP IP protocol, we will discuss regarding that what kind of a relationship they have. So this we better understand by using this figure. So most of us are aware regarding the lowermost two layers of TCP IP model that is say it is my physical layer and this is data link layer. So this is what is an arrangement in TCP IP but when it comes to this IT, IEEE standard this data link layer got divided into a uh, two separate units or two subunits you can call so that is the uppermost subunit we call it as llc that is logical link control and the lower sub layer we call it as mac layer so this has a different functions to support that is ethernet mac token ring mac okay and so on and this physical layer say if it is a ethernet mac the physical layer that will going to support this ethernet mac is ethernet physical okay so and when it comes to the token ring it is again token ring physical layer okay so this is how this IEEE supports the TCP IP model or for that matter OSI model. Now when you look at this LLC model, I mean LLC sub layer, this LLC provides single layer, single link layer protocol for all IEEE LANs. This means that, that this LLC 
can provide interconnectivity between different lands because it makes max sublayer transparent to those lands okay now when it comes to the medium access control layer uh, or you can call it as a sub layer so it includes that different access methods such as random access method controlled access method or channelization which we have discussed in the previous module so ieee802 has created a sub layer called medium access control that defines a specific method for a each lan to access the medium okay now already we have discussed in detail regarding these access methods we'll see it in the later part of this video so before going to that discussion first we talk regarding ethernet evolution so ethernet has say evolved as started with standard ethernet that is uh first one is standard ethernet and which supports a speed up to 10 mb mbps 10 megabits per second which offers us a speed of 10 megabits per second then later on it has been evolved as fast ethernet which is capable to support higher speed that is 100 mbps which is 10 times faster compared to the standard and next version of ethernet is that is gigabit ethernet as the name suggest this gigabit ethernet sub support speed in terms of gigabits that is 1 gb gbps gigabits per second and last one is that is 10 gigabit ethernet 10 gigabit ethernet as the name suggests it supports a speed up to 10 gigabits per seconds so these are the four evolved versions of ethernet so first one is a standard second is a uh, fast gigabit so these evolutions are based on the demand of the situation so we'll start discussing regarding the ethernet first so we'll start with standard ethernet so as you know that so standard ethernet now basically we refer that original ethernet technology so with some rate of 10 mbps as a standard standard ethernet now what are its characteristics we'll see to it first the first most important characteristics of the standard ethernet is it offers a connectionless unreliable service it offers connectionless unreliable service okay so it offers this connectionless service which is unreliable unreliable type so what exactly the connectionless means the connectionless means that each frame sent by any station is independent of a previous or the next frame so it never tries to establish a relationship between the frames of the same set of data this is what is the meaning of connectionless so again it is unreliable 
I said connection less and unre unreliable. So unreliable here indicates it is something similar to that of our IP protocol. So there is no mechanism provided at the receiver to find out uh, say is there any problem with the received data or what. So this is these are the certain characteristics of this ethernet. The next is we will talk regarding the frame format of this ethernet. When we see a frame format of this ethernet it starts with a preamble okay so when you look at the way in which the fields of this ethernet frames are organized the first and the foremost field is preamble field so i'll draw that figure first so the frame looks like this the first and the the first part of this frame we call it as preamble and redraw it this is preamble field so its length is 7 bytes. Basically, this particular field is not normally uh, counted. It is not normally counted as a part of Ethernet frame. Okay, actually, it is part of physical layer. We normally we call it as a part of the physical layer. For a better understanding reason, the preamble part is also added with the other fields of ethernet ethernet frame okay so it starts with a preamble field whose length is 7 bytes so 7 bytes means 56 bits so when you look at the bit pattern of this preamble field it will be of the type 0101 okay so which will going to lead to a creation of the waveform which will be suitable for a receiver to synchronize with the sender okay normally these frames uh, the data that moves from one station to another station in the form of a frame before start of the actual data or before start of the actual header of a frame this preamble field is used to synchronize both sender and receiver normally for that reason the bit pattern that is used in the preamble is of the type 0101 so which is of 7 bytes long so then next comes is next field is which is of the say size 1 byte that is SFD field start of frame delimiter field start of frame delimiter field interestingly when you look at the bit pattern of this particular field it is also of the type 1010 okay but the only change in the bit pattern of this is that last two bits okay so that is lsb bits of sfd will go to become 11 okay so basically to indicate to the receiver this is what is the last byte of synchronization activity so after this the actual fields will going to start to indicate that this sft field is used that is the reason only the two bits of this SFC, sfd fields are different from that of preamble bits next is that is the address field uh, i'll write it as source address so this is of say 6 bytes long okay so this is of 6 bytes long so we're going to discuss regarding this 
addresses in detail. Next is destination address, which is also a six bytes long. So this field basically is contains that data link layer address, and depending on say these fields, okay, uh, the names it holds the addresses of those specific stations. SA indicates that is uh, source address. So sorry, here I need to do one correction. It is not SA, it is DA and this is SA. Okay, so SA here indicates source address, DA indicates destination address. So this address is of destination stations address and this address is of the address of the station from where this frame is sent okay so basically this is of 48 bits long and this address is mainly to identify destination and source address is meant for identifying the source okay so this particular address of source will be useful for the receiver to reply back to the sent frame. Next is next field is the type field. So this type field is of two bytes long. Okay, the size of this type field is two bytes long. Basically, this particular field de defines that upper layer protocols whose packet is encapsulated in the payload part of this frame so now to indicate to that particular protocol to which protocol this particular data is required to be delivered its name will be mentioned over here okay so the data part is will go to be part of payload of frame so next part comes is the payload part of the frame which will go to carry the data which will go to carry the data normally this data is obtained from network layer okay so this particular field will going to contain a data okay sometimes we also add padding to this field so we call it as rather than simply calling it as data i'll going to call it as data and pad field okay basically sometimes we need a support of pad field so altogether its size is 1500 bytes so this is a maximum length of this payload part so which will basically carry a data and pad pad information its maximum size is 1500 bytes whereas its minimum size is 46 bytes its minimum size is 46 bytes so altogether say length varies between 46 and 1500 bytes the last field okay whose size is four bytes long okay so that is crc field. so this is how the whole frame is looks like so i'll repeat it that the first part is preamble part which carries a seven bytes that means 56 bits so these 56 bits are of the type 1010 so basically it will be helpful for sender and receiver to synchronize themselves with each other and sfd is to indicate that the next field or the next byte which will go to start is of the ethernet frames byte so the first byte of ether, uh, the first field of Ethernet frame is de destination address, which is meant for in identifying the destination. And next byte is source address, it is to identify the source station. Type field basically to help us helps the receiver or helps the data link layer at a receiving site to deliver the data to a particular network layer protocol. And the last part is CRC part. Which, in, which will going to include okay uh, the error detection information in case of crc32 okay sometimes we 
use CRC32 over here. So the CRC basically one which is calculated by taking all these fields starting with the address. So we'll start with address field. So from this field till this field all the fields were taken into a consideration to calculate this CRC. So with whatever the CRC we obtain that will going to be field over here. Okay. So this is how uh, the CRC will be calculated. So these are uh, different fields of the Ethernet frame. Now one more interesting thing about this Ethernet is that payload part or data and padding part whose size varies between 1500 bytes to 46 bytes. Naturally the question arises in case if the network layer sends the data of size 20 bytes how we will going to how it will make it to uh, make it equal to 46 bytes this is what is a natural question arises to everyone say for example if the network layer sends the data whose size is only 20 bytes okay only 20 bytes how this will going to increase it to 46 bytes the minimum length required is 46 so for that we need to add certain additional thing to it so that this field should be equal to 46 bit. So this is what is the minimum requirement. Okay. So minimum size of the data is required is 46. In case if the higher layer does not say sense that 56 by uh, 46 bytes, if the data sent by the higher layer is less than 46 bytes, in that case, certain additional dummy bits will going to be added with it. So that we call it as padding. Okay. So these padding are necessary to keep its minimum size equal to 46 bytes. Now why that 46 bytes? That is what is the question. Why it is a 46 bytes? If I add all the fields together, okay, so all fields from starting from address, if I add all those field values, uh, sizes, it becomes 64 bytes it becomes 64 bytes so the minimum frame size should be equal to 64 bytes so the 64 bytes is possible by taking a this data field equal to 46 if it is lesser than 46 then this value will go to be different it will be less than 64 so if it is lesser than 64 okay then it will going to create a problem when it comes to implementing a random access technique so that is csma ca csma ca demands the minimum length of the frame should be equal to 64 bytes when the medium speed is equal to 10 mbps okay so the thing is this if this medium is of 10 mbps as it is you know that ethernet supports okay as it is you know that ethernet supports speed up to 10 mbps okay we are talking of ethernet which is capable of supporting 10 mbps speed so the propagation speed here is 10 mbps i mean bandwidth here is 10 mbps okay bandwidth here is 10 mbps so if this bandwidth is 10 mbps okay this puts a restriction on the size of the packet as minimum minimum size should be equal to 64 bytes okay if it is less than 64 bytes it is not possible to implement csma cd please uh, go through that video of csma cd where where we have attempted one example in which we have shown why it is 64 64 bytes okay so that example if you uh, go through that example you will come to know regarding why it is 64 by bytes okay next is we'll talk regarding addressing okay so that addressing uh, in uh, say 
ethernet uh, this ethernet the addresses i mean to say in addresses in ethernet comes from nic card network interface card nic provides the required 48 bit address to the stations the required 48 bit addresses will going to be provided by network interface card so this particular card will going to be fitted into the station or a computer to provide a station with that required link layer address and whatever the address this card will going to provide to the station and its size is 64 uh, 6 bytes its size is 6 bytes which is equal to 48 bits 6 into 8 it is 48 bits okay so normally this particular address it will be expressed in hexadecimal notation that is say for example so it will be expressed like this 4a this is some dummy address 4a 30 and uh, say 30 and next 10 some numbers it has to be a hexadecimal number so 21 and then say to indicate it is a hexadecimal number i will add one hexadecimal number such as a so now this is how we express or we represent that 48 bit address in a lan okay now there are three different types of uh, addresses that are in a use even though it is a 48 bits size so this particular 48 bit address will go to be grouped into a three categories so the first category is unicast unicast address so it is uh, uh, basically uh, in this case the frame moves from only one station and it will it is meant for one particular destination it is not meant for a group or, or say some multiple computers whatever the frame that is left from the sender will going to go to a one single destination that type of uh, addresses which are meant for point to point kind of communication or which are meant for say communicating with only one destination then we call it as unicast addressing we call it as unicast addressing that type of addresses we call it as unicast and second case is multicast so the frame in this case sent by some st uh, station okay so the frame one which is sent by the station it is meant for certain group of stations it is meant for certain group of station that type of address ethernet address we call it as multicast address and there will be a one more category of address that is broadcast okay so there is one more category address that is broadcast broadcast address basically it is meant for all so which is a bigger version of multicast okay bigger version of multicasting that is broadcast it is with it is for everyone so now how exactly these ad addresses will going to be identified so to know regarding that i'll use this figure so which will give you a clear cut idea so we have we know that there are six bytes in every address so each byte is capable of uh, say uh, each byte means uh, 8 bits so like this we will going to have this is my first byte this is uh, this is my second byte so on up to 6 bytes this is the last byte that is sixth byte okay so now the last bit of this first byte okay so which will going to indicate whether it is unicast or multicast so if this last bit of first byte if it is see please listen it carefully last bit of the first byte if it is zero 
it is unicast it is unicast address if it is one so this last bit is basically deciding which kind of address it is it is multicast okay so the last bit it indicates whether it is a unicast or multicast rest all the bytes they are varying from say 0 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 1 1 1 okay so these are the variations of the bits of remaining by remaining bytes here too you have an option of varying the bytes but the last bit if it is a zero it indicates it is a unicast if it is a one it, it, it indicates it is a broadcast i mean uh, unicast but when it comes to uh, uh, say this uh, broadcast okay if the least significant bit of the first byte okay if it is zero uh, uh, say then it is unicast but when it comes to a broadcast all the bits will going to become one okay so all the bits will going to become one so all the bits of all the bytes will going to become one so this is what is broadcast it is meant for all everyone will going to receive these type of a frames okay all the stations in the system will going to accept these type of a frames so if you are put all the bits equal to one that is broadcast address okay so this is all about say addressing in the ethernet next uh, we'll see how exactly the efficiency of ethernet or in uh, in a standard ethernet is calculated so in a standard ethernet the efficiency is of obtained so obtained with the help of this formula that is 1 divided by 1 plus 6.4 into a 1 divided by 1 plus 6.4 into a where a okay this a is equal to say propagation delay propagation delay okay or propagation speed divided by transmission delay transmission delay okay so this is the ratio of these two delays so by calculating say if these two values are given by substituting them over here will get a a so this a will going to play a key role in finding the efficiency of a standard ethernet okay uh, so to know regarding more this particular formula i'll solve one example so i'll read out the statement so in a standard ethernet with a transmission whenever they say a standard ethernet by default the transmission speed is 10 mbps so sometimes they mention regarding the speed sometimes they won't mention regarding the speed so in case if the speed is not mentioned and if they use the word standard ethernet then by default you have to take it as 10 mbps in a standard ethernet we assume that length of the medium is 2500 meters okay this is what is given 2500 meters length of the medium and size of the frame is 512 bits size is 512 bits say the propagation delay normally in a cable it will be in case if this particular data is not given you take it as 10 raised to uh, uh, sorry it should be 10 raised to 10 raised to plus 8 meters per second okay this is what is the propagation speed okay so with this data okay you need to calculate the efficiency of the standard ethernet okay so anyway this propagation delay is given so we need to find first a so propagation delay is given so next is we need to find the transmission delay so transmission delay 
is obtained with the help of the size and uh, sorry uh, uh, this is uh, the size and the size of the file and uh, bandwidth okay so that is transmission delay that is your size of the file is 512 bits and bandwidth is 10 mbps so 10 mbps means 10 raised to 7 okay so 10 mbps means 10 raised to 7 so together it will going to become equal to uh, Uh, if I calculate it, I'll going to get 51.2 microseconds. This is my transmission delay. Now, first I need to calculate propagation delay. So, when the speed, propagation speed is given, that is 2 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second, propagation delay will going to be calculated with the help of distance traveled or total distance, that is 2500 meters divided by 2 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second that is propagation speed so distance divided by speed will going to give you the propagation delay or propagation time okay so distance divided by speed so distance is 2500 meters and uh, speed is 2 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second this is propagation speed which is normally equal to 2 into 10 raised to 8 in a medium in case if they have they have not uh, in case if this particular data is not provided in the uh, question you have to assume it as 2 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second so if i divide these two i will going to get the value equal to 1 point i mean 12.5 uh, microseconds it is 12.5 microseconds so naturally now i need to calculate a that is 12.5 microseconds divided by 51.2 microseconds divided by 51.2 microseconds which is equal to since it is a ratio it does not going to have any unit it will become equal to 2.4 so if you substitute this in the equation that is so efficiency is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus 6.4 into a if you substitute into it it becomes equal to 39 percent okay it will be equal to 39 percent okay hmm. so this is how you need to calculate the efficiency of standard uh, ethernet now we'll talk regarding implementation of standard ethernet the standard ethernet will going to be implemented majorly in four different ways there are some different ways of implementing it okay so we be the most commonly used implementations are four so very commonly used that is 10 base 5 implementation the next is 10 base 2 implementation next is 10 base t implementation that is twisted pair and last one is 10 base f implementation so this particular implementation 10 base phi okay so this particular 10 base phi implementation is implemented with the help of thick coaxial cable thick coaxial cable the one whose size is very very large that particular coaxial cable used in this particular implementation the next one is 10 base 2 implementation so we, this particular implementation is done with the help of thin uh, coaxial cable okay so and next is twisted pair cable okay is used in 10 base t whereas in a 10 base f they use fiber optic cables for implementation we'll see these things in a detail okay so now as you know that 10 base phi as i told 
that it use sometimes we call it as a thick ethernet or thick net okay so basically uh, this 10 uh, base 5 was the first ethernet specification that was used for the bus topology with external trans receivers okay so trans receiver indicates that it is a transmitter or receiver okay so they are connected with the help of coaxial cable okay so this is this looks like this so you will go to have some cable end like this okay so you will go to have some trans receivers over here so these trans receivers are meant for connecting your stations to them so this is my thick coaxial cable just for uh, better understanding reasons i am using the purposely i am using the double lines over here for a coaxial cables which indicates that it is a thick coaxial cable and these are my stations which are connected to these trans receivers okay uh, uh, these are the stations which are using this common medium so this is how the whole arrangement now basically this uh, trans receivers okay this trans receivers okay basically this trans receivers are responsible for transmitting and receiving and detecting the collisions okay so naturally the question arises why that collision collision is mainly because that it is a shared medium it is a broadcast medium you see here in this figure i am talking regarding as two stations these two stations are connected to the common medium okay so th again this is uh, my cable ends so these are the cable ends these two are the cable ends okay so you see when you look at this whole arrangement these are the trans receivers which are helping the signal to be say uh, which are meant for listening to the signal transmitted by the other stations and which are also meant for transmitting the signals from some particular station and also capable of detecting the collision so this 10 base 5 supports mm, the maximum cable length in 10 base 5 ethernet is 500 meters it can go up to say 500 meters so beyond this 500 meters signal will go to degrade severely so up to 500 meters you can use this particular coaxial cable to connect the devices so if the length is 500 meters so let's uh, say we can add the five segments of such a 500 meters so they can be connected with the help of repeaters okay it is say it is again you are not supposed to sit only up to 500 meters if you are planning if your organization has uh, say capable of supporting more number of devices if the organization wants to connect more number of say stations to the medium in that case you need you are allowed to use a repeaters okay with the help of repeater you can interconnect such a multiple cables so such uh, it, it 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 allows so maximum of say you know, five segments of 500 meters are allowed to, to be interconnected okay so with the help of repeaters next is 10 base 2 so 10 base 2 ethernet so this particular uh, 10 base 2 also sometimes called as thin ethernet this is already i told thin ethernet is already also called as a thin ethernet or sometimes it is also referred as cheap ethernet cheap cheap er net you can say so this supports a length up to 200 meters okay so it supports 10 base 2 supports the this cable length thin cable length up to 200 meters okay so 
the it is cheaper compared to that of thick ethernet because that size of the uh, ethernet uh, cable that cable used to interconnect the stations is smaller compared to that of the thick ethernet okay so here to the uh, way in which the devices are connected here is uh, in a broadcast manner that means the single cable will going to be shared by multiple stations okay so that means there is a possibility of a collision in the coaxial cable uh, again we will going to use some uh, special devices for here to interconnect the stations okay so uh, that uh, say the trans receivers okay uh, they are com cheaper compared to that of our thick coaxial ethernet okay so the arrangement here also looks like this we're going to have a cable and i'll going to call it as ce so this is my thin ethernet which will going to be connect say we can say use these type of uh, connectors to in connect the stations to it and this will be extended okay here to have one more stations okay like this it supports multiple stations in the end it will also going to have a cable end cable end so which is indication of termination of the cable okay it can support maximum up to 200 meters close to 200 meter the actual length what 10 base 2 supports is 185 meters 185 meters okay so this is how uh, thin coaxial cable looks like next is 10 base t that is twisted pair okay so this uh, in 10 base t uh, basically it is meant for uh, to arrange the system in a star topology manner okay uh, here the stations are connected through hub okay stations are connected to hub, hub. yes so to which we are connecting our devices okay i mean our stations this is s1 this is s2 uh, this will be my s3 so this is how the arrangement will go to be there in a 10 base t so these are our twisted pair cables these are our twisted pair tp twisted pair cables these are our twisted pair cables with the help of which you are connecting a stations to the hubs okay so the maximum length what it can support is 100 meters okay so it can support is 100 meters Mm. so next is 10 base f 10 base f so uh, basically this is the optical fiber f here indicates the optical fiber so it it can support a speed up to high, uh, say 10 mbps we are talking about 10 mbps ethernet the cable one which supports the 10 mbps speed will be preferred here because uh, we are talking about standard ethernet and 10 base f uses again a star topology similar to that of our twisted paper uh, twisted pair cable and uh, the stations almost arrangement of connecting the stations will also look like uh, same as that of twisted pair and only thing only advantage what we get here is it can support a cable of longer distance compared to that of twisted pair okay so like this we have a four different ways of implementing the standard ethernet okay so in the next video i'll going to discuss regarding the fast ethernet okay so i'll end this discussion over here in the next video i'll start discussing regarding the other versions of ethernet or more evolved versions of the ethernet that is fast ethernet gigabit ethernet and so on okay so thank you very much